It's Kim from Police and Harmony from recording in Belfast, Prince Edward Island in our shop. And for the regular viewers, you see that I'm alone. Jen's away uh, looking, doing a project, so she's not able to join me today. But I decided I was going to try to do this on my own. And um, I'm just going to ask for forgiveness right from the very, very beginning because I definitely have no experience with this at all. So I've got the iPad and I'm recording and I've got my phone set up. So in case that recording doesn't work and I have no idea if I'm actually going to be able to publish this or not, but we'll find out soon enough. So this is episode 71 and you're seeing it on May 14th. Um, it is going to be a little bit of a different episode than what we usually do because I'm here by myself just talking. I'm not sure how long I'll be able to stand and listen to myself, but I think that um, I'm getting some help in the background with Ken how, watching to make sure that I'm I'm in the frame and everything and um, we're gonna do a little tour of the shop so since we're back here we haven't filmed uh, or recorded here in quite a long time so we've made a lot of changes in the shop so after I record this part then we're going to record a little tour of the of the shop and hopefully I will know how to put the two things together so I know that the expectations are usually pretty high for our um, our recording uh, with music and everything. I have no clue if I'm going to be able to do music. I'm not doing any slideshows. I'm just going to talk, show my projects, <laughs> and hope for the best. So um, like always, we start with a little farm update. So um, the farm update is the weather, which is normally what we talk about. And it's been, we had the worst weekend ever last weekend it was uh so that was the first week of may and it was so cold we actually had to dig out all of the horses blankets and put their blankets back on because they've shed all of their their winter coat and uh it was sideways rain with high winds and right just right above zero so they were all over there shivering so we had to put their uh put their blankets on um and it was bad enough that we don't they don't aren't usually blanketed even in the winter as long as it's just like regular snow it's when it's um when they can get like soaking rain and wind and um then with the cold temperatures near freezing then that's what's really really dangerous for for animals for hypothermia they've got free choice hay so they had lots to eat so that usually keeps them warm but we really felt that they were uncomfortable so we dragged out all the blankets put on three horse blankets on three horses and had to leave them on for two or two or three days actually because it never it didn't warm up. So we finally got a little bit of sunshine and uh, today was a nice day but it's still chilly. In fact I had my Joe Bats arm sweater on to come over here and then I thought well that's that's a bit much so I, I decided to change. So um, so that's it and uh, the sheep are um, eating grass because the grass has actually started to grow even though it's the the weather is the way that it is and everything is really green and it looks really promising but we're just hoping for the best that uh that we actually get spring here so um so i'm going i one of the reasons why i wanted to try this even though i was going to be on my own and not wait for jen is because i actually got quite a lot of progress done on my projects which is somewhat unusual and um, I wanted to update you on what I've done. So the first thing I'm going to show is Paisley because it's the easiest. It's kind of straightforward. So um, it's I've started since we last saw each other. I have um, put in steaks in the sleeves where the sleeves go. I've never done this before. So I and I whenever I used to see it on um, podcasts and other other uh, blogs and so forth, I always wondered. How does that really work? Because I couldn't really get my mind around it on my own. But now that I've done it, of course, I understand perfectly. So I've I've done the steaks on the both sides of the sleeves, and I actually have um, one centimeter or two two centimeters or so left to knit, and then um, I start doing the um, the the other shaping on the top. Um, the sleeves will be done. So it's um, it's coming along, and I've done all of the um, the decreases to fit the sleeves in and everything. So now it's it's going much faster because there's a lot less stitches on it, 
And um, so that's uh, that's that. I've got my two steaks. I've got my steak in the front, and it's just moving right along. So that's going according to plan. So um, that's the paisley. However, what I really wanted to show is Madeline. So again, Madeline is out of the latest uh, Rowan magazine, and uh, it's a pattern by Galena Carroll. And it's um, I have the front finished. I knit. As you recall, if, for people that have been watching us uh, for a while, I've been I'm knitting the front and the back together on the same uh, needles. It's knit flat, so I'm just I'm just going back and forth, but using one set of needles, and I um, have finished the front. So the back is not finished because I stopped working on the back because. Um, after I was about halfway through the front, I took a closer look at the pattern and I read through and I realized that it's a boat neck. And a boat neck is not really a good look for me if it's really close up to my up to my neck and just straight across the shoulders because my neck is kind of short. I really prefer a, at least a crew neck and maybe something even a little bit lower. <clears throat> so I decided that I would try to make the adjustment myself. So we will stay tuned if I did a good job or not because I really don't know. I've never done this before. So this is the front and um, it it looks a little bit more scoopy than what I had planned, but that could be okay. We're gonna we're gonna see what happens. But the design um, itself was really cute because if you did do the straight uh, the straight neck across the top, you do um, a little bit of ribbing. So when you're sewing it together, you're going to have a little bit of detail on the shoulders and there'll be ribbing there. So I left that detail on the top of the so shoulders. I did the um, the decreases and the and then shaping for the neck, and I actually used the rain pattern to kind of judge how how I would decrease and so forth. So that's um, that done. It looks like it's going to work, but we'll see. And I'm prepared that if it doesn't look good, then I'll rip back to where I started the neck shaping and I'll just do the boat neck. But I, I wanted to try this because it's really better, better for me with my, my, um, the way my neck is that I have something that's a little bit lower. Um, I also, uh, the last step on the, on the project is of course, to do the duplicate stitch that's on the, on the edges. And I started doing that um, while I was knitting. So when I felt like I wanted to take a break from the actual knitting, I would do a couple of these lines because I don't really want to face that at the end doing all of this uh, duplicate stitch. So I've never done duplicate stitch on a, um, on, a, on a garment. I've done it on the Christmas balls and so forth, but I've never done it on a sweater. Um, because I, if you're doing duplicate stitch, you are stitching, making stitches with a needle, a darning needle or a, a tapestry needle over top of stitches that have already been knit. So inherently it's double thickness. So I never, it doesn't really, um, it fools the eye, but there is a little bit of a difference in the fabric. So I thought. But then when I started doing it on, on this, and I, it could be partly because of the kid silk haze is so, so fluffy, but you really can't tell that it's been applied over the top of the, the sweater. So the, for color work, they gave you, uh, in the pattern, they pattern, they gave you a break because carrying your dark um, threads through the color work, nor, like how you would do it normally, for sure it would show through on this, uh, on, on, the, behind the nectar color, that light pink, peachy pink. So it's certainly the right technique to use. And I've done the brown, a couple of the brown stripes, and there's a couple of little um, stitches that have to be done on the pink over the brown, which I will do that later because there's not that much. So somebody asked um, at one point, I saw a message if, if we, I would show how, how to do the duplicate stitch. So I do intend to do that. I just haven't done it yet. So I'll save some of it to do and film a little tutorial about how to do it. But it looks, uh, I think it's starting, makes quite a difference, those few stitches along, along the border. So the front is done and I'm just about, um, I just have to do a couple rows on the on a couple more rows for length on the back and oh my 
Yeah, so my yarn is dragged all over the place because while I was walking over here, my ball of uh, kid silk haze fell out of my bag. Luckily, Ken was watching me walk across from the house and he yelled at me, just stop right there. And the ball was almost on the doorstep and I was almost at the shop. So the whole thing was <laughs> unraveled. And um, luckily he saw noticed me right before I hit where the mud is in front of the in front of the shop. So anyway, okay, it's safe, but uh, that could have been a disaster. Of course, there's always an adventure. So the back is uh, I haven't done any duplicate stitch on the back yet. I'm just about to um, do a few a few rows, and then um, I will do a little bit of neck, sh neck shaping for the back of the neck as well um, but I have a few centimeters to go uh, to do that so that's it so I'm really happy about this um, and I think I, I, have, I have a little bit of a, a fear that the opposite is happening to this as what hap happened with rain so if you have been watching us then you remember that I was making thought rain was going to be way too small for me and that it was going to be a gift for Jennifer and as it turned out the knitting after it was knit it still fit me um this looks a little tiny bit small but I'm I'm not sure we'll have to see we'll have to see what happens it's hard to tell when it's not been blocked and the fabric is very um fairly loose because it's knit on a fairly large needle size for the fineness of the of the the yarn so we'll just see what we'll just see what happens. It might be uh, it might be one of the articles in the magazine is sweater girls. I might be a sweater girl in it if it's a little bit tighter. So that's it for the that's it for the knit, knitting. So I haven't started Ken's bark sweater yet. I really wanted to get a you know a good headway on on Madeline first, but I'm kind of thinking now I'm kind of in a place where I might want to cast on something else now just to get just get to get started. So I've developed this routine. I'm working on these two projects uh, at the same time. So I've developed this routine that I, when I get up in the morning or wake up, I have my coffee in bed and I knit on the Paisley. And then uh, in the evening when I come home from work, I knit on the, on the Madeline. And that seems to be, that seems to be working pretty well. So that's it. Uh, that's it for projects. So there's no finished objects because there's, we haven't finished anything so um, I am going to show you a finished object that later that um, we didn't make but Janet who works with us here in the shop made and it's a really cute little project um, but Ken has to get them for me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he's gonna he's gonna get that and he'll probably scoot in here in a minute and, and uh, pass them to me because I, I hadn't seen them or I didn't, didn't bring them over but before we do that I'm going to show you some yarn updates so we have um, we made all of the uh, Heather Day Lopey as you recall we talked about it in the last episode that we recorded and I have all of the colors here and um, we talked about the fact that it's uh, it was really um, the, the the way that the lopi took the color the dye it was it was really really gorgeous and uh, we have all of the colors now and I don't think on the last episode that we had them had them all uh, out so there's there's um, these jewel tones so there's the the Trondheim blue a night without stars and spruce and the amethyst brooch so that's over a soft gray um heatherdale lopi and then there's the natural that we that we had as well so this is a ball that's been caked because um we had jennifer hicks who also works with us knit a project from the heatherdale lopi so what she did was um, she used anthology so that's the hat pattern that's in the the strange brew book by tin can knits and she used um, the recipe for the for the hat and she used all of the colors of the Heatherdale Lopi and it just turned out so gorgeous it's huge because she made the largest size because we're thinking we may do a kit and we wanted to know exactly what the quantity of yarn we needed to make the the kit and so people could knit the largest size all the way to the smallest so 
you can see this, it's, it really is huge. So, and her gauge is right on. You've we heard us talk about Jennifer's knitting before. She's always perfect with the gauge, but this is a big, this is a big hat. So, um, but it goes all the way down to children's sizes. So you can, um, there's lots of options if your head is a little smaller than that, but it's just, it looks like stained glass. It's just gorgeous and it's so cozy. A little bit heavy for May, but maybe would have been useful last weekend. I don't know. <laughs> So there's that. And then um, what else do we have in the shop? Uh, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you already got to see this last week because we featured it that, sorry, two weeks ago in the newsletter. Um, and, but I'm going to show you. So we have, um, we had some um, alpaca and we, after we shear, or after shearing day, we had lots of black lamb's wool. So from our flock, so we decided that we would start washing up the black lamb's wool and we made a natural black in the Belfast, or sorry, Bell River DK yarn. So this is a yarn that we made, I don't know, probably three years ago, we made this the same um, recipe for yarn. It's quite, uh, it's 250 yards for 100 grams. So kind of a little, it's, it's fairly fine. Um, because I find with, when you blend with alpaca, it's a 50-50 blend, our black lamb's wool and alpaca. And we had a, a bit of um, black alpaca left from uh, some that we purchased from Green Gable Alpaca. And we mixed the, the black with the black lamb's wool and got this really natural, dark natural black. Some of our black sheep have kind of a silvery um, gray tone to them as well so they have the black uh it's kind of like um uh i don't know it's it's still black they look like they're black sheep but it has some of the fibers in their their coats are um have a silvery gray so that we use that as well as long as it was fairly rich so there are differences in the different skeins of natural black black but we did do quite big batches um, so if you want to purchase any of this natural black, we will make sure that we've got the, the um, skeins kind of color matched as, as closely as possible. It's really, it's really, really soft and, and lovely and that 50% alpaca with this lamb's wool, it makes a really, really nice, um, a really nice yarn for, for knitting. Um, so we had the natural black, then we added a little bit of white wool to some of the batches to get a gray. And then Jen over dyed the gray in, with amethyst brooch and vineyard. We only have a few of these left. And then we also did an over dye on um, slightly lighter, slightly lighter of bramble. So you can see that these um, tones go together and we still have a little bit of this left on cones. So if you visit the shop, there may be another color or two um, there by the time you get there. So that adventure with the black lamb's wool didn't end there actually. So we, Janet, who works in the shop with us, has, um, she likes to knit socks. So she knits socks on her knitting machine, but she also hand knits quite a lot of socks. And she requested if I, if I could spin a yarn for socks. Um, she had a very particular um, type of uh, yarn that she wanted to use. So I made that for her, but it didn't work out on the machine. It was a, it was a little too fine for the machine that if, for what she wanted it for. So she has the um, Saltwater Gifts book and she actually um, made the vamps in the Saltwater Gift book. And she, um, she did these, uh, these vamps with the, the yarn that we, that we made. And then she, and she knit them on a tighter gauge than what she could get with her machine. And she made these little, little vamps and put just a little bit of trim there. And I had made her quite a big batch of this. So, um, I think she's going to hand knit some, some of these vamps for the, for the shop. So, um, they're not ready yet. This is just the, the prototype. And, um, I have to tell you that I have, I have a pair and Ken has a pair and we've been wearing them around. They feel so great. And the, the, she's made the little cuff. It's fairly, fairly tight. It doesn't, doesn't, um, 
like it doesn't cut off your circulation or anything, but it's a little, it's a bit snug around the ankle. And, it, but she did that on purpose because uh, you can wear it, wear it in sneakers and runners and so forth and they stay perfectly. And I, I hate socks in bed, but I've actually worn mine to bed a couple times. So they're just, they're just gorgeous. And that's a natural black, um, this is sheep from the ewes, so sheep's wool. It's, we didn't use the lamb's wool in this one. And there's no, nothing else in it, 100% wool. And they, she knit them on a tight enough gauge that um, they're nice and nice and sturdy. So I've been wearing mine every day. And um, I will wear them and see how, how they wear because I know people like to have that report back on how, uh, how well they're wearing. But they're, they're really nice. And we'll let you know if we can knit enough of them that it's worth putting in the shop or not. And uh, we, may, um, we may make more of this yarn. We still have lots of black wool left. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens with that. So that's the shop update and a future update maybe. And the only other thing that I have, that, that's for the yarns, but the other thing that I have is I bought, um, when I ordered the 52 weeks of shawls, which we have in stock, I decided to order the, the book Strands of Joy. So usually what we do is when we place an order for the first, uh, the first time for a book is that we order three or four of them and um, if we really like it when we get it in our hands and, and um, take a look at all the patterns and everything, then we order more. So I will tell you, I definitely will be ordering more of this. We've got, we've got two, um, two on the shop, in the shop online, and um, that's it. But uh, I will order, or more, order more of these because they, the, um, it's, you know, from Lina, they just, they just do such a great job. Um, there's even a dress, a dress in here to make. And, um, since it's me doing this, I won't, there's no slideshow. <laughs> I'm just going to, I don't know if I can just find some pictures here. Like you've got some, some, uh, sweaters that have used the variegated, uh, yarn and the yoke with a plain, um, this is just gorgeous. And with a plain, uh, solid yarn, um, just some really, um, lovely low contrast sweaters as well and you know that we're a big fan of uh, Norwegian knitting design that book so it's funny because you can recognize some of these patterns are reminiscent of the um, old patterns that were done in the Norwegian knitting design um, uh, book as well look and look at this it's like oak leaves it's just gorgeous so that book, it's there. It's aptly, aptly, or aptly named "Strands of Joy" because I think you will have strands of joy when you're knitting out of that. So we have that book, just a couple, but we will get more. And um, just a, a couple of things that have been restocked. So I just received a couple days ago quite a large order of the Swift Yarn Buddy combo. So that uh, made by um, Scott at Scott, or sorry, Scott at Fox Mountain, and um, he uh, sent us over. I have uh, I have some inventory in that. So if you they're back up in the shop. So if you want that the the wooden Swift and Yarn Buddy, I'm not gonna. I show it here because I didn't have a chance to put one together. I also, um, we also replenish the, the yarn buddy by itself. So if you did, don't need the Swift, but you wanted the, the uh, yarn buddy, we've got some more of those. And we were out of stock of the Nasta pins. So we, we got a lot of those, um, those in as well. So we're all up to date with, we also have a couple drop spindles and uh, Jilgen's uh, for spinning if uh, you're interested in that as well. So we're, we're in stock with Fox Mountain. So I think that's it for the shop update. And I think that that's it for what I wanna talk about. So we're just going to stop the, the um, video recording and um, Ken is gonna help me and we're gonna do a little tour of the store and uh, hopefully I can and can put these two together so that you'll be able to see that. So we'll join, be back in a few minutes. To Fleece and Harmony, <laughs> welcome. So if everything worked okay, you're seeing this actually at the end of our, the podcast that I just recorded. So we've um, done quite a lot of rearranging in our shop. So we wanted to give just a little tour of uh, what's happening. 
and uh, I think we might have done a tour of the store of the shop like a long time ago when we very first uh, started doing podcasts but it's changed quite a lot so we're gonna start uh, at the front door as you saw and um, what we have in the center we have all of our Rowan uh, Rowan yarns and we're still um, working on the setup of that so you see, see um, um, some cupboards are a little bit uneven and that kind of thing like as far as we don't have them all, all in place yet but, so it's a work in progress so everything in the center is our Rowan um, our Rowan selection and um, for people um, that that have heard about us and been following us you know that our our policy if you want with Rowan is that when we carry the line we're going to carry every color that they make so um, the where we work on that a little, gradually a little bit so we have um line lots of lines that we have every shade that they that they make and that, that are available so we'll kind of go through so we have our alpaca classic and our um alpaca soft dk in on this uh this rack and then as we come into the shop we have um all of the we have this area where we're featuring uh whatever seasonal and of course we've got the cottons in the front because uh, because we're in summer. So we have this, so this all can be changed around. Um, these shelves are on, on wheels so we can move them around if we want. And on the outside, everything that you see on the outside, those are the yarns that we spin and make here. So I'll kind of go back and forth between the center and the, um, the, um, the outside. And so we'll, we're gonna try kind of uh, show both at the same time. We do carry a small selection of um, felting wool. We don't sell that online because we it's kind of inconsistent what we have, but we do make some felting wool. And we also um, sometimes dye wool that we purchase from Coslin's mill. And we just, we keep carry that here as a heritage worsted. And um, we, we dye it here, but it's not spun here and it's not our fiber. So it's just a, a something that we have when you come through. Um, uh, through, we have lots of areas to do a little bit of display on the top of the shelves and we carry um, all of our special uh, yarns that we make that are not part of our core um, our core yarns then they're they're usually in this section um, we have pom-poms here and accessories I have a little display of um, these lovely little books this is um, if you remember when I knit the Christmas ornament and Joanne uh, gave me a book to thank me for test knitting. She thanked all her test knitters by doing that. So now she's made them and um, they're, they're for sale. So we have some and they're, they're just blank. So for your little project, you can keep notes about your projects uh, there. So those are for sale. And then um, coming along here, we have um, a section for uh, other yarns that we do as well, not the the um, core like Selkirk Worsted or Signature Erin. We do have some bulky yarns which have um, a little bit of alpaca in them. Uh, we have the Garfield Grizzly. When we have Garfield Grizzly left over, this, that lives here. And on this side, if we go back towards Rowan, we have all of our Denim Revive and the um, Sock Yak DK is here. And you come along, the, there's all the Icelandic that you just saw in the episode. There's the, the natural is, is there as well. And uh, we keep, uh, we try to keep some knitting and projects in the mill as well to show. So you might remember this is the mare um, uh, hat and, and knits that uh, Jennifer uh, Hicks knit for us so we have those yarns and then this is all of the natural black uh, uh, selection that we just talked about and the over dyes and everything so that's there in the specialty yarns so um, we have um, all the lace yarns are here and we're using bottom shelves to store um, some store things so that eventually those will have doors on it as well come around the loop I don't know you can see outside the I don't know if you can get that Ken outside the window that's the front front pasture starting to grow <laughs> we usually have sheep out there not yet though and we come along here that gets a little bit dark here so hopefully you're able to see we have our uh, island um, island blend 
fine. So carrying that by, by Rowan. And this section here is the felted, uh, felted tweed section. All the colors that they make, they're here. And we have more um, cotton yarns on, on this side. We did also get a little bit of um, creative linen. So we've got a couple, a couple of um, colors of that, but so it's not really out and displayed yet because we don't have all of the colors yet, but uh, we have that. And then we have our beautiful kid silk case, all those colors. And um, we just, we use the tops to display. So we have, um, these are the yarns that went into Ken's Huxley. So that's just, uh, that's there on display. This is a swatch that we did for the Air Heart Shawl in, um, in black. So we just, we, we try to keep swatches, quite a few swatches around as well. And we have um, the fine lace and the Kid Classic uh, lines here. So we're going to kind of um, scoot around this way and go back down the next aisle. Um, we It's kind of tight here. I don't know if you can get in here, Ken. But we have our Coco Knits uh, selection is here. So we have mostly everything that they have available. Here. We didn't clean this up before the tour, but it's uh, this. Um, I want to show this live. This beautiful little the linen bag. It's so cute. We we made one of them, and uh, I don't know if you realize this or not. If you were looking at this, is that um, when you the bag comes separately, so you can um, build have the bag and put your own handles on it, or you can buy the leather handles from Coco Knits. And when you buy the leather handles, you actually get a pattern to sew the bag if you want to sew the bag yourself so um that's not uh i don't know that we ever talked about that before but that's a really good a good thing so and usually we have our big uh coconuts blocking kits here but uh we're sold out and this whole section here is all the sock yarn so everybody um <laughs> buys sock yarn this is where this is where it comes from right here so you can see we uh, don't have every color in stock right now, but we have. We will. We'll be making it because we have. Uh, we have uh, stock like the bases made, so we'll just be dyeing it. It's, it never stays in in um, stock for long. And our mitten kits are here, and everybody recognizes the neon kits. So now we're gonna come up this way, and on this side we have all of the brushed fleece from Rowan. It's there and nice and squishy and so now we're kind of in the main part where our own yarns are so this whole wall is the Aran um the Aran skeins so everything is here um it's not we don't have every color because um we just we don't we rotate the the colors we can make any of them whenever they're ordered but we um we don't have them all stocked out here all at once so this whole section is Aran um we'll keep going and we also have our chiago needle i was gonna say noodle chiago noodle <laughs> we have our chiago chiago okay chiago needles here so this is uh all of the the short circulars that are that are here so your nine inch and 12 inch and 16 inch and then we have all of the um tips here so the spin the bamboo spin tips we have all of those and we also carry all of the um, red lace stainless steel and I was practicing my practicing my um, calligraphy a little bit I made these little signs so we're just testing them out to see if they're <laughs> if they're gonna work or not and you might have noticed as Ken's panning around that there's some beautiful photography of sheep I don't know if you can get this Ken here but um, all of this, uh, this photography of these sheep is um, by a photographer from Nova Scotia called Ernest Cadigan. And he um, just does a beautiful job on these, uh, on these sheep photos. The flock is not our flock. It's actually um, owned by a lady that owns a yarn shop in Nova Scotia, Gasper, Gaspero Valley Fibers. These are her, her sheep and um, uh, Ernest lives close by to her, so he goes to her farm to photograph. So the sun looks like it's getting a little bit 
going to be a little bit wonky here for us. So all of this section that you're seeing now is the Selkirk worsted section. And um, those are, that goes all the way over here. We've got some knitted samples around. There's my hinterland sweater. I have to, if I want to get dressed to go anywhere, I have to come out here and get something to wear because it's all, everything is always out, out here. And um, this, this hat is really cute. It's uh, the moose cap that's out of the saltwater, um, I think it's the classics book as well. And um, Janet, who works with us, uh, knit that. And she actually did the, the moose in duplicate stitch in, in red. And there's um, the Perhaps Love hat that Jennifer designed. And um, more of just a pile of swatches. I was playing around with kids' silk haze with different uh, different yarns. So we always have swat. Like I said, we always have swatches uh, around. And I don't know if you got the whole the whole section, Ken. And um, we have uh, jewel our jewel um, collection here. I've got my little um, charm lock uh, brooch with the sea. What did I do? Tree frog tree frog today so this is uh i'm getting motions from behind the camera because the sun is <laughs> so that's um that's that and then here we have oops just dropped my alden lace sign so this is where alden lace lives so we featured we featured um that last week in the newsletter so a lot of that is sold out so uh, we're making more and we have a little bit of the blooming point lace that we featured a couple episodes uh that that's here together so with the uh with the alden lace so we have that and then we're back around to the, to the beginning again we also carry um a little bit of uh the fiber company so we have some road to china light we carry in the store but we don't have a full a full selection of that it's um we just have a little bit it's so it's lovely a lovely yarn the the whole shop we if we just pan around this way ken nope he's zooming in on <laughs> the samples more sweaters that live out here <laughs> And then down in this section of the store, we have a little sitting area. And this is where we have knit night, when we were having knit night. And we also twist yarn out here sometimes. So there's always some hanks of yarn in the, on the back of one of the chairs usually. And uh, we have more chairs that we put out when uh, we're hoping that we're gonna be able to have knit night again sometime, but uh, this is where we this is where we do it in this um, this section, and I think I we have just a little um, uh, display area there, which I think you saw from when we were filming the or recording the the podcast, and then all of our collection of books is here. So we have um, they, there's some we have some woolen socks that uh, Janet. Uh, knit on her knitting machine we also have we dye with greener shade dye so we have the um, starter kits with greener shades and then we also carry some larger quantities of the dyes if you've if you've gone through the starter kit and you're you're fully into the dyeing then uh, then you can buy a larger quantity as well and then all these are all the books that we have for sale so there's a selection um, a selection here and then we um, have all of the Rowan books and line up books here in this section. So um, we keep uh, back issues of the, Ro the Rowan magazines because they're all great. Their patterns are, uh, are classics. So we have, um, so you, you don't just see the current issue there. There's, there's uh, back issues and other books, more, more of Ernest's uh, work and other little things. Uh, that are there and um this is our our the store library i don't know if i can you can see that we have quite a lot of books that uh, that we have in the store so we have all of these are our reference books and we have back issues of uh rowan magazine going all the way to one we're missing some that i can't find i've been scouring uh Usually, usually I'm scouring the internet and trying to find find um, the back issues of uh, Rowan, and I'm missing a couple of them 
um, but I can't find, so I don't know if uh, why that is, if they're particularly rare or not. But I uh, every now and then I I keep a list, so I know which ones I'm that what that I'm looking for. And uh, we have more books uh, here on this uh, this rack, and I think I think that's about it. So that's what the store looks like for those that were were wondering. Hopefully, you'll be able to come and visit sometime. So we'll end uh, the podcast here and I'll just uh, remind you to, if you like our podcast, give us a thumbs up. Um, love to see your comments as always. We, we entertain ourselves by looking at all the, all the comments. So if you want to subscribe, uh, um, that also helps us. So that's great. And we hope that you have a great two weeks and we'll see you in two weeks time. Take care. Bye.